Hello everybody and welcome to the Dittenworks YouTube channel where today I'm going to talk about damaged, damaged even, metal dome tweeters. Um, one of the multiple questions I get asked about repairing speakers is there anything I can do with this damaged tweeter? Um, what we've got here today is a pair of Celestian tweeters. These ones came out of a pair of modified Celestian 3s. Um, just to show you a difference, this is a DL4 unit, this is a Celestian 3 unit. These are just a later version of this. The actual diaphragm is, is identical, so they're interchangeable. Um, the Celestian 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11 and 15 all have these units. The DL8, DL6 and DL4, DL12 DL Series 2s all have this. And this is the Celestian 1 inch titanium dome tweeter. Now, before I go any further, I've got to tell you that the titanium tweeters are harder to repair than the aluminium tweeters, purely on the basis that titanium is a much harder metal. So, if you found yourself with a dented tweeter, the first thing to remember, particularly on Celestian ones, is do not undo these screws on these ones while the faceplate is still in the cabinet, because what will happen is you'll undo the screws and... Uh, this will fall off and that will drop to the bottom of the cabinet and you'll be left <laughs> with potentially a damaged voice coil. So the correct way to do it with these, undo the faceplate retaining screws. This is the same on the SL series as well. So you end up with the whole assembly removed and then you can remove the magnet screws, take that off and you'll be presented with this. Now there is one difference here that on the Celestian unit series, a double-sided sticky tape gasket was used to hold the diaphragm to the faceplate. Now, if you try and force that off, what happens is the double-sided sticky tape grips to the lead wires and you'll rip the lead wires off. So on a unit series, I wouldn't recommend trying to pull the diaphragm away from the faceplate. I would leave it on the faceplate when you attempt to do the repair that I'm going to show you in a minute. On the DL series, they didn't do that, so you can actually remove the tweeter diaphragm from the face plate, and that does make it easier for something that's going to happen in a minute. Now, if I'd been presented with a tweeter that badly damaged, I probably wouldn't bother trying to repair it. You'll never get this dome completely smooth again, and that will affect breakup modes of the tweeters. So if this was an unobtainium tweeter, it could be on anything. I've done this with Wharfdale aluminium tweeters. I've done it with, um, or oh, blimey, several different manufacturers of tweeters. If it's not as bad as this, you can use a Q-tip and just try and push some of those creases out. Right now, this one I did really, really overdo it on this one, and you could get it somewhat back into shape. Now, what I'm going to do here is we'll take. This one and we'll just put, actually we could do it while it's in situation. Let's just put, huh, this one doesn't want a dent. Typical, it doesn't actually want a dent, but if you had a very small dent in the diaphragm, which I couldn't actually demonstrate there, let's try and do it. Right. That's a more realistic kind of dent you might find on the tweeter. I mean, something like that would have had to have been repeatedly pushed in and out. Right, let's push that back into place and then in circular motions, you can just smooth that out and you can get that, get that a lot better than it was. And be careful not to crease or dent the voice coil because it won't go back in and you'll have ruined it. Now, you can still see a slight ripple on that one. And like I said, it's much harder to do it on the titanium ones purely because the material's harder. But that would suffice. It would still potentially upset the breakup modes, but it shouldn't upset the pistonic motion because you've not damaged the voice coil in any way. Right, now back to something I was saying about the DL and the unit series. So with the unit series, they are held in place. So it's very important that when you try and line this back up, you need to be very careful that you line up the face plate and the diaphragm and the coil back on the magnet. Because if you force it on, what will happen is you could, you hear that? That's me folding the coil over before it goes into the pole piece gap. 
again, that's going to wreck the performance of this tweeter. So it's all about being delicate. So with the unit series, we'll just line the screw holes up and that's dropped into place. You could redo up the magnet screws, reattach the wires, put the faceplate back in and it should be working. With the DL series, this diaphragm comes off, so it's much easier to locate the screws, drop it into place, and then put the faceplate back on, which is what I've done with these DL4 tweeters. But basically the point of this is, to a degree, you can repair these tweeters. You can get them working again, but if it's too badly creased, you listen to that, you know, it's never ever going to go back properly. Um, it would still work, but when people say it doesn't affect the sound, that's absolute rubbish. It really will. That the, the breakup modes, the pistonic motion of the diaphragm is just affected badly. Um, particularly on a pair of Celestian 100s I had in once for repair, the, the HF was really splashy with a dented dome. And when I replaced the diaphragm in those, that completely went away. Okay, so that's just a quick video on how you can repair uh, metal dome tweeters, um, but only if the dent's not too bad. That if it's at this level, you know, that's just beyond repair, really. I mean, if you spent long enough, you could probably smooth that out. I do have a slightly different method that I use for SL series tweeters, which was a tool that I made. Um, with the aluminium tweeters, it's a more fragile material. It's easier to work with, but it's also easier to, 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 to damage that. You can be quite rough with this titanium, you know. With the aluminium, you've got to be very careful. So, anyway, I hope that's um, helpful advice to somebody out there who has any speakers with metal dome tweeters. Um, particularly the Celestian ones, just make sure you don't undo these screws while the faceplate's still in the box. If anybody saw on my um, Facebook page the other day, a uh, chap in Hong Kong, he'd undone those and being a Celestian 300, which is a very deep box, his magnet and diaphragm dropped right to the bottom of the cabinet. But hopefully this will be useful to somebody. Um, you know, it, to a degree, you can repair these. And just, just for everybody else to let them know, I haven't completely ruined a pair of tweeters. These were already very badly burnt. I don't know if you can see that there on the coil. These ones have been frazzled by somebody, not me. Um, yeah, the, the coil, look at that, the coil wires are actually so badly burnt, they're coming off. Anyway, guys, that's the little Ditton Works video for today. Um, I hope that's helpful to some of you out there. Take care, I'll speak to you soon.